In this video, I'm going to completely introduce you with uh, Kotlin channels. So, uh, channels are used for uh, asynchronous communication between the coroutines. And uh, when we think of a channel, uh, we could say that uh, it can be represented as a pipe to which we can send and retrieve the data from. Now, uh, channels allow us to pass a stream of values from one coroutine to another. And the elements inside the channel are uh, processed in the same order as they arrive in. For example, one coroutine, the producer, can send some data to a channel, while the other coroutine, the receiver, can receive the data from it. While a channel can have multiple receivers, uh, each element uh, sent through the channel is handled only once by the receivers. Now, I'm going to demonstrate in the code uh, how channels uh, actually work and showcase all different types of channels and the main difference between them as well. So this is quite important, which is why I advise you to watch the whole video if you want to learn. So this is the project that I have made for the demonstration purposes. So as you can see, we have only one view model, and the logic which we're going to implement will be located in this init block, which will be triggered immediately as we initialize this same view model. Okay. We also have down below one enum class that contains four different constants, and this language enum class will be used to actually uh, send and receive the data from the channel. So here on the top you can see that I have created one channel variable, and this channel will be able to send and receive the language enum class that we have specified right here. So to be able to send some data to the channel, we can just call here channel.send, okay? So here we have two coroutines, the first one will be used as a producer to produce or send some data, and the second one will be used to receive that same data that we passed through this channel. So let's here uh, send uh, one uh, language enum constant, for example, Kotlin, right? I'm going to also send one more, which will be a Java. Uh, I'm going to also here just uh, log a simple message uh, that will say, for example, Kotlin uh, sent, and uh, down below, uh, Java sent as well. Now, in this other uh, coroutine, uh, we're going to basically uh, receive that data from our channel. So let's here just um, log one simple message, and as a message here, I'm going to call a channel, uh, dot receive, right? So I'm going to also wrap that uh, into the actual uh, quotes. So just uh, call here this uh, string template. There we go. So from our first uh, coroutine, uh, we're going to send uh, two different uh, uh, constants into our channel. The first one is a Kotlin and the second one is Java. And in the second coroutine, we are receiving uh, that same data that we are passing to our coroutine, okay? So this receive function will basically uh, retrieve and remove an element from the channel if it's not empty. And now I'm going to just uh, launch this application so we can see uh, what kind of a result uh, we are going to get. Uh, let me just here rename this to uh, a Java send. Okay, and now let's launch this application so we can see what kind of a result we're going to get. Okay, uh, so you can see that the first log that was triggered was a Kotlin send. And after we have successfully sent that uh, uh, enum to our channel, then we have printed this um, uh, Kotlin enum uh, constant from our second coroutine, right? And then we have printed a Java send after we have received this uh, first uh, constant from our channel, but that uh, second uh, enum was not received because this receive function uh, was triggered only once and this receive function will only uh, grab or receive uh, one element from this channel and not more than that. So in order to get that second constant that we are passing to this channel, we need to call this receive function once again. So now if we launch this application, uh, then you will see that now we should be able to print that uh, second uh, constant that we have sent to this channel as well. Now before I show you another way of receiving uh, all your uh, elements from this channel without calling this receive function multiple times, uh, first let me just here uh, log uh, one more thing. So I'm going to here uh, log one uh, property of our channel which is called the is closed for receive. So let me just, uh, okay, so here we need to add um, experimental coroutines API, there we go. And let's uh, print this uh, actual uh, log at the beginning and at the end of our actual uh, coroutine, okay? So this uh, is closed for receive property will basically return true if the channel was closed by invocation of a close on the send channel side and all previously sent uh, items were uh, already received and it will return false otherwise. So let's allow this application once again. So here, as you can see, the first the boolean that was printed was false, and the second one uh, was false as well, which means that our channel uh, wasn't actually closed even after we have received uh, all those elements from our channel. Now, to be able to close our channel uh, after we successfully send uh, all our elements through our channel, uh, then we need to call here one uh, function, which is called close. 
So let's here call a channel.close. And now if we launch this application once again, you will see that the second boolean value that will be printed here uh, will actually be true, because now we have successfully closed uh, our uh, channel. Okay, so the next thing which I want to show you here is how you can actually receive all your elements from the channel without calling this receive function multiple times. So this way of receiving our elements from the channel can be a little bit tedious because sometimes we actually don't know how many elements we are sending to our channel, okay? And in that case, uh, there is uh, one solution for that. So instead of calling this receive function, we can call uh, consume each function. So let's here call uh, channel.consume each. And this function will basically uh, loop uh, through each and every uh, element that we have sent to our uh, channel. And we will be able to receive them without calling this receive function multiple times. So let's just call here a logdb and let's uh, print uh, that actual uh, language. Okay. So now let's uh, trigger this uh, once again. And you will see that now we have printed uh, all our uh, elements that we have sent to our channel without calling that uh, receive function multiple times. Now the next uh, function which I'm going to show you here is for our first producer uh, coroutine. So uh, you can see that um, at the moment we are calling this uh, close function explicitly to actually close our channel after we send all our elements, but there is even a better solution for that. So if you want to close your channel successfully after you send all your elements to this channel, we can call one a new function which is called produce. And that produce function will close our channel uh, automatically by itself, so we don't have to worry about uh, closing this uh, channel by ourselves. So for that purpose, uh, we actually need to create here a new variable, okay? So instead of um, Using this uh, regular uh, channel type, we need to create a new variable. I'm going to comment out this uh, first one actually. So uh, this one will have a type of uh, receive uh, channel. And here just specify the language, which is the same type that we are passing and receiving from our channel. And here just initialize this uh, channel. So I'm going to now delete everything from here. And instead I'm going to just uh, specify the value of our channel to be the return type of this uh, produce function. Okay, so uh, this produce function will basically uh, produce a stream of values by sending them to a channel and it will return a reference to that coroutine as a receive channel type. So this resulting object can be used to receive elements produced by this coroutine. And the important thing here to note is that this channel is closed when the coroutine completes, which means that we don't need to handle the closure of this channel by ourselves. And from here we can just call a send function and send uh, all those elements, for example language.kotlin, language.java. And here I'm going to now just uh, log one more thing. So channel.is closed for receive. And I'm going to also print that value after this uh, consume each block. So let's launch this example. And you will see that now we were able to receive uh, all those um, elements from our channel that we have sent with this produce function. And also our channel has been automatically closed after we have uh, sent all those elements and our coroutine was actually completed. Now the next important thing which I want to uh, talk about the channels is the uh, channel types. So there are four different uh, channel types which are uh, buffered, conflated, rendezvous and uh, unlimited. So uh, channels uh, differ in uh, how many elements they can actually store internally until they are properly received. And this uh, buffer size affects uh, how send operations are performed since we cannot actually uh, send elements to a channel that uh, is already full. And now I'm going to demonstrate uh, how each and every uh, channel type uh, works and the main differences between them as well. And first let's start with a buffered channel. So buffered channels allow us to specify the maximum capacity of the buffer, which means that uh, we will not be able to send more data than the buffer capacity until we receive that data and make some more space for the buffer to receive the new data. And because of this uh, buffer limit, if we send an element uh, while the channel is full, uh, then this uh, call will be suspended until more space is freed up. And the buffer can be freed up by calling the receive function. So let me just uh, here uh, specify the capacity parameter of our produce uh, function to, for example, number 2. And now with this, we are limiting the buffer capacity of this channel to number 2. Let me here just uh, uh, call this send function two more times to send uh, all our uh, elements from this uh, enum class. So Python and the JavaScript. There you go. And after each one, I'm going to just print here uh, one message saying uh, Kotlin uh, sent, then a uh, Java sent, Python sent, and the uh, JavaScript sent as well. And in this case down below, I'm going to remove those uh, two uh, logs. 
and instead I'm going to just uh, for demonstration purposes uh, log uh, one uh, new uh, log here which will call actually our uh, receive function. So after we receive uh, each uh, element from this channel I want to delay uh, this actual coroutine for uh, maybe let's say three seconds and then I'm going to also separate the log result with uh, down below. So let's just uh, trigger this uh, receive function uh, four times. There you go. So now let's launch this application and let's see what kind of a result we are going to get. So remember, the capacity of our channel is uh, number two. Okay, so I'm going to just wait until this uh, whole uh, process is finished. So let's just wait uh, three more seconds and uh, three more seconds as well. Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, from our actual producer uh, channel, we are sending uh, all those uh, four different uh, languages to our channel. However, the capacity of that channel is uh, 2, which means that we will not be able to send uh, all those um, uh, elements or languages at once. So first we are sending only 2, because the capacity is number 2. And then we are receiving that uh, element uh, from our second uh, receiver coroutine, and only after we receive that uh, element, we are going to remove that element from our actual uh, channel buffer, and then we are going to free uh, one more space to send a new element to our channel, which is in this case Python, right? And after we free that uh, actual one space from our channel, then we can send one more, because the capacity is number two. And after we receive one more uh, element uh, from our channel, then we are removing that uh, element from our channel, and we are making a new space for our new element to be sent to a channel, which is JavaScript. And then we are just uh, basically printing those values in our log. So that's how the buffer the channels uh, actually works. So basically here we have specified the capacity of number 2, which means that we can send uh, only two of those elements to our channel, and after that this actual channel or the coroutine is suspended. And this coroutine is suspended until we actually receive one of those elements from the channel, and we free some space from the buffer. And after we free the space from the buffer, then a new element can be sent to our channel, and then our uh, channel is uh, once again suspended, until we receive one of those elements again, so we can free some space inside our channel, okay? So that's basically how the buffered channel uh, actually works. Now, uh, the next uh, type of a channel that I want to show here is uh, called uh, conflated. Uh, let me just here specify uh, conflated, right? So this uh, conflated uh, is uh, another uh, type of a channel, which uh, has a capacity limit of number one. So a conflated channel uh, buffers exactly one element and in turns overrides the previous sent elements if they have not been yet received. So basically with a conflated type, uh, all new elements will replace the previous ones. So uh, we will be able to receive basically only the last uh, one, uh, therefore we will lose uh, all other previous uh, elements that we sent to this channel. As you can see in this case, we are also sending uh, all those uh, different uh, languages to our channel. And here, instead of calling this receive function, I'm going to just uh, call uh, uh, channel.consume uh, each. And for each channel, I'm going to just uh, here uh, print that language, so it.name, right? So let's allow this example and let's see uh, what kind of a result uh, we are going to get. So we are sending uh, all those different um, elements to our channel, so four of them, as you can see, Kotlin, Java, Python, and the JavaScript. But here we are printing only the latest one, and not everything, right? So that's basically how a conflated channel actually works. So even though we are sending uh, multiple different um, elements inside the channel, only the latest one uh, will be printed. Okay, and the next uh, channel type that I want to show here is uh, called a render view. So a render view is basically a default uh, channel type, which means that we don't have to specify here uh, anything explicitly. So by default, uh, each channel uh, has a type of a render view. And this uh, channel type is basically uh, a buffered channel with a capacity of zero, which means that the send operation will get suspended until we actually receive that um, uh, element that we have sent. So uh, for example, in this uh, produce, we are sending uh, all those uh, four different uh, elements, and in this uh, uh, second uh, receiver coroutine, I'm going to just um, uh, call here uh, one log, and I'm going to just uh, receive two of those uh, elements. So channel.receive, after a delay of uh, three seconds, I'm going to also uh, print one more. So let's just here print one more, there we go. And uh, let's allow this application. So here, as you can see, we are first uh, printing uh, Kotlin because um, that was the first element that we have sent, and after three seconds, we have printed this uh, uh, second one as well. 
but we haven't printed uh, all other different uh, elements uh, that we have actually sent because our channel is now actually suspended. So only after we call this receive once again, uh, then our uh, actual channel will resume and we are going to get that uh, third one, okay? So if we want to get uh, all those elements that we have actually sent to our channel, uh, we need to call this receive function for each one of them. Otherwise, our channel uh, will actually be suspended. Okay, and the last one that I want to show you here uh, is actually called the unlimited, okay? So here, let me just uh, specify in this producer, uh, in this produce function, uh, the capacity. So capacity to be unlimited, okay? And whenever we specify the unlimited uh, type of our actual channel, it means that the capacity of our uh, channel or our buffer will be unlimited. And we can send uh, as many uh, elements to this channel as we want. However, uh, even though the unlimited channels uh, have uh, an unlimited buffer size, uh, for example, if no memory is available and you try to send more elements to it, uh, then you will eventually get uh, an out-of-memory exception. So uh, you do need to be careful when using this uh, unlimited channel. And now let me also show you an example with this um, uh, channel as well. So in this case, I'm going to uh, send all those four um, elements uh, as well. And of course, I'm going to call this uh, receive function only two times. So in the previous example, when we have used that uh, render view or a uh, default uh, type channel, we were able to send uh, only those uh, actual uh, new elements when we have received the previous one, okay? However, now with this unlimited channel, let's see what kind of a result uh, we are going to get. So in this example right here, as you can see, we are able to actually send uh, all those uh, elements without uh, waiting for one of those uh, elements to be received, right? So first we have sent all those elements and then we have received only two of them. But with a default render view type of our channel, we will be able to send a new element only if the previous one was actually received. And there you go. So that's how uh, channels uh, actually work uh, with the coroutines. So I have showcased uh, all different uh, kind of examples of how you can create, uh, send and receive elements from a channel, but also uh, different uh, types of uh, channels and the main difference between them. So uh, be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about the channels uh, in Kotlin. Also be sure to comment uh, if you think that I have missed uh, some important information about the channels. And of course, uh, be sure to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that will be all.